Hey everyone, it's Wilmer from the Game Academy, and today we're going to continue looking at the visual effect graph. Now that we're familiar with the interface, let's put it to work and build our first particle system. Here's what we're going to put together in this episode. This is considered a really basic graph, but we're going to assemble this block by block, explaining everything as we go. The final effect looks like flaming tendrils or glowing smoke. It's super easy to set up, and you can build this from scratch in just about 20 minutes. So let's get started. Make sure you have a project created in the HD render pipeline. We can start fresh with a new scene, file new scene. And just as a backdrop for our effect, I have some prefabs created for both the camera and scene settings. Delete the existing main camera, then import the prefabs from the resource links, and that should also bring in some corresponding assets into your project. Just drag the prefabs into your hierarchy. This is just to save you a little bit of setup time. There's nothing special about these prefabs at all. You could also just pause the video and copy my values and build the components on your own. I have both a post-process layer and global post-process volume on the main camera. And we have some basic overrides for color grading, bloom, chromatic aberration, and vignetting. You don't need these, but they help make the effect look a little more polished. The scene settings are specific to the HD pipeline, and I'm only using those to get the gradient sky in the background. Go ahead and add your own colors here if you want. Once you have it the way that you like it, create a new visual effect graph. Create visual effects, visual effect graph and I'll call mine Flare VFX. We won't see anything in the scene until we create a game object with a visual effect component as well, and we can generate that automatically by dragging the graph asset into the hierarchy. Our graph comes in at world origin, just out of camera view. You can simply grab the visual effect object and transform it like any other game object. I'll shift mine five units forward in Z, and don't worry about placement too much. We can always change this or the camera transform at any time. To edit the graph, we'll need to go to the visual effect graph window. You can either double click the graph asset in the project or just select it and choose window, visual effects, visual effect graph. Our default particle effect looks like a fountain of icons spewing out of world origin. Take a look at the graph just to recap, our main contexts include spawn, initialize, update, and quad output. They work in order from top to bottom, so we'll start with the spawn. In this case, the system is spawning 10 particles per second. If you dial this up to 100, you won't notice much of a change because the initialize context is currently capping our capacity at a total of 32 particles, meaning we can never have more than 32 particles on screen at any time. Dial the capacity to 1000, and now our icons start to look like smoke particles or bubbles because we have more of them. But we'll need to go down to the quad output context if we don't want them to look like icons. Anything that controls how the particles render on screen will be controlled by this output context. Our main texture is currently a sprite that Unity uses for a default particle, and we're getting that literally from the visual effect graph package. We have a few other stock textures in here as well. We could switch to a sphere sprite or something a little bit closer to a real smoke particle or what we'll use for our final effect, the sparkle texture. Currently, the particle faces toward camera using this orient block and we have a few options in here. Most particles are just single polygons and we can control the way that they face depending on the effect that we're going for. In this case, we wanna choose a long velocity. This makes the particle polygons face with their up or Y axis in the direction that they're traveling. Currently, we're setting the size of the entire particle and animating the XYZ scale over its lifetime. Click on the curve thumbnail to see more detail. The left keyframe represents the spawn time when the particle is born. You'll see that we start really small, less than a tenth of a unit. Then the size in XYZ grows continuously until we reach the end of its lifetime which is one to three seconds using the default settings. So we're growing on all three axes, X, Y, and Z. 
I've experimented already, and it looks a little bit better if we can just animate the length of the particle in Y, but not the width in X. So let's get rid of the set size over life, and instead replace that with a few different blocks. Make sure you have auto compile turned on. As you make changes, we want that to show up in the editor. Let's toggle off the set size over life block by unchecking this. Our sparkle particles become very short and squat when we do that. And you actually can just delete the set size over lifetime block. We'll replace that with some other blocks that do similar things but give us more specific control. Let's first add a general size block, not one that needs to animate over time, just a constant global control. Over the title bar or blank area of the context, right click, create block, or you could also just press the space bar to get the same menu. We're looking for a block to change the particle's size attribute. So you could browse within the block library, but there are so, so many blocks in here. If you sort of know the name of the block that you're looking for, it's easier just to filter by the name. The one that we want is called set size. So I'm just gonna filter for size and I'm gonna choose set size. Don't confuse that with add size. This will set our default base size for the particles That'll affect all axes, so you'll globally scale the particles in all directions. So here's what a value of one looks like, and here's a value of one tenth. And let's just keep it at one for now. Let's also scale the x axis smaller and thinner, so we'll need to add another block for that. That's called set scale, and that lets you control the x, y, z axes independently. And I only want to scale the x axis in this case, so let's choose that and I'll make it thin and narrow, something small like 0.05 or 1 20th of a unit. And now the particles look more streak-like. The y-axis I wanna scale as well, but it would look better if we do have some animation along the length. Let's make another block for the y-axis, but this one will actually change over time. So let's find a block called set scale over life. We only need to affect the y-axis, so we'll choose y. And what I want to do is make the particle start out very small when it's spawning, then stretch to a decent ribbon size when it's in the middle of its lifetime, and then as it approaches death, it will shrink again, almost like embers of a fire. I can reshape the default smooth curve with keyframes, and I'm going to make it more of a plateau shape. So let's just pick the constant curve as a starter. I'll add a couple of keyframes in the middle just to hold the center. And then let's drag the end keyframes down to zero. The middle of the curve doesn't need to go all the way up to a value of one. So let's drag these keys down to about 0 0.2. And now our particles are spraying out like little darts. While we're in the output context, let's change the blend mode to additive. And that way the particles will brighten up the scene like glowing dust or tracers. And we can change the color alpha over life to make the particles stand out a little bit more. Instead of just plain white, we can add some HDR color in the middle just to make them glow. The bottom row of this gradient band represents colors. So you can just click there and add more different hues. Let's make the particles go from white to a really bright HDR yellow, then have them cool down to a red orange before they flame out. The top of the gradient represents the alpha values or transparency. We want the particles to start invisible with an alpha of zero, then have them be fully visible and hold for a while, and then we'll just fade out at the end. Experiment for yourself here, keeping an eye on how the particles react in the editor. You can always use the new button to save your gradient settings while you're trying out different colors and alphas. And here's the gradient that I ended up with. At the moment, the particles are spewing upward like a fountain of sparks. Though we can define the initial bounds where the particle effect spawns to a larger volume, that doesn't necessarily do anything because the particles are still spawning from a single point in space. We can use a position block in the initialized context to make the particles originate from a 3D primitive instead of just a single point. Create block, position, and you can see all of the options here. I could choose a box, or a circle, or a sphere. But in this case, I'm gonna go for a donut-like shape and choose a torus. Now, once you do that, you can see the particles light up like a Christmas wreath, more so if I increase the number of particles. If I dial it right up to 2,000, and the capacity to 10,000, 
now the torus shape is really more obvious. 